Thank you so much for downloading today's episode of the Red Pill Investor. My name's John Ashley, a pseudonym of a realtor here in the great state of Arizona, here to help you with your real estate sales skills. Why? Well, it's just sort of my way to pay it forward for all the people who've given me the tips, the tricks, the things to say to get the contract signed when I needed it the most. Their only request of me, well, simply pay it forward and this is my opportunity to you. Thank you so much for downloading today's episode of the Red Bill Investor. And today, I've got an exciting edition of the Red Bill Investor for you. In this episode, I'm going to share with you my friend Kurt Stenson. Now, Kurt is a great investor here in the local Tucson area. He's also a realtor. The good thing about Kurt Stinson, he does a lot of business. Not to mention the fact that he's just an all-around good guy. I've interviewed him once before in episode number 361. And if you've not heard that one, you'll definitely want to go check it out. But if you have heard that one, in this episode, what you're going to hear is an update of what's really possible for you. An update of what you could really become if that's what you chose to do. If you choose to become a full-time investing realtor. Without any further ado, may I please introduce to you in our first episode of, well, Investor Week, Kurt Stinson. All right, Red Pill Investors, thank you so much for joining me today on Investor Week on Monday. We're going to go ahead and get this week kicked off quickly with one of my absolute best friends in the entire wide world, Kurt Stinson. Kurt, are you there? Yes, I sure am, Carl. Outstanding. Good deal. Well, thank you for taking time out of your day to join us and share with us a little bit more about your progress. I know that a lot of the Red Pill investors out there, the realtors out there that follow our podcast, you know, they're familiar with your story. I mean, you've been featured a couple times here on the podcast uh, as, uh, as a guy that I think is just someone to really look up to. I know that you were up in episode 361, which coincidentally is one of our highest downloaded episodes. Did you know that? No, that's awesome. That's great. <laughs> well, it's because you got a lot, of, a lot of great stories to tell. And guys, the reason why I wanted to go ahead and have Kurt come back and go ahead and kick this Investor Week off is because I believe that Kurt Stenson is really kind of a guy that you could look to as an example of the fullness of what you could potentially become as a realtor as well as an investor. If you were looking to go ahead and help people in the real estate realm, well then Kurt's a pretty good guy to look to because he does a lot of business, he does it very ethically, and he's also very helpful to the people he works with. But more importantly, here's another thing that I wanted to have him on the podcast for, is to kind of have you guys understand that there are realtors just like Kurt in your marketplace. Now, I didn't tell Kurt before he got on the podcast, so this is kind of news to him. But Kurt, did you know I heard on the radio the other day a commercial from you? <laughs> yes, I'm sure you probably yeah, did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Would you care sharing that with the with the audience? What that what that is? What that what that says? Um, basically, what it says is that um, it I do it with a, a local celebrity in town, and I, the premises of it is I will I will buy your house, or if you need top dollar, I will list your house. So. All these agents are out there saying, I'll guarantee you a sale um, or I will buy your house in 45 days. Well, they buy their house at such a ridiculous low price. It's a smoke and screen to the public. So I decided basically just to call everybody out and say, hey, I will, if, you need, if you need your house sold and want an offer in 24 hours, I will do that. If you want top dollar for your house, I will list it and put it on the market and sell it for top dollar. So I basically just call that the truth of the business. Mm. Mm, mm. Now, I'm going to dive huge into that because I really want to get into that strategy just a smidge. But before we do, I always like to get started off in the podcast with just a maybe a little word of advice, a, a motivational saying or something like that that you say to yourself when times are getting tough or to get you motivated. What kind of words would you share with the group to get the call kicked off properly? What kind of motivational quote do you have for us there? Um. 
I've been doing affirmations, Carl, for 18 years with an affirmation partner. We talk every day. We talk every day, five days a week, and have for 18 years. Mm-hmm. And our we have five affirmations, but our our we start off our affirmation the same way every time we we start our I'm excited, live, full of energy, and ready to conquer this day. Ooh. And then we do. Ooh. Yep. Slow and that down. Then we do. Say it again. Yep. Um, I'm excited, live, full of energy, and ready to conquer the day. Yes. Oh, yeah. I love that. That's just getting me pumped just thinking about it. Ooh. Was there yeah, another and, thing? And we, end, and we end the five affirmations the same way every time, and we say, uh, we are thankful to God for all the blessings he has bestowed on me, my family, and all my friends. Outstanding. Great focus. Boy, I got to tell you, you know, and that's something that I've been teaching our one-on-ones for a very long time, that the need for constant affirmations, role play, and practice. And I just want to point out to them that, you know, you've done this 18 years, this particular practice, nonstop, every morning with one person, as I know you role play. I mean, unless you guys are practically dead, you're role playing, you're, you know, you're doing your affirmations. I mean, that's just a a big part of your life. Would you, would you agree with that? Oh yeah. If you're not, yeah. If you're not, if you're not growing, you're dying. Man, I tell you, that's a powerful, uh, powerful thing that I know that Kurt's adopted in his life. So, all right, good deal. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Let's go ahead and step on in back into that moment there where you were kind of blowing the minds of the, the local realtors and of course the investors and, you know, the reason why I wanted to bring that that up in specific, that ad, is because I wanted to ask you in specific about how much do you suppose, in terms of business, you know, I remember we had a conversation one time. You mentioned that I happened to bring you a certain amount of business in a wholesaling capacity. It was a certain percentage. Would you remember offhand what that percentage was? And I think it was last well, you year. Bring, yeah, you were bringing me, Carl, you were bringing me probably 35 to 40% of my, my flip business. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now, here's the reason why I wanted to point this out to you guys. Kurt and I are very good friends. And even though I bring him a lot of business, Kurt still needs to go out and find even more. And that's the same way it is in your local market. You know, they're going to go out, they're going to find ways to make business for themselves, as Kurt has, and he should. You know, and that's what they're going to do. They're going to evolve. And they're going to be realtors in your marketplace. If they're not wholesaling now, they soon will be. And you need to be aware that the people like Kurt Stinson in your marketplace who have the means, the experience, the clientele, the good name, they can pose a serious threat in your business. And if you're not doing everything you can to increase your skills, boy, you're on the wrong track. <laughs> so let me tell you, uh, or let me ask you, Kurt. It's June first ish, okay? Tell us a little bit about your real estate business. Um, right now, my brokerage business, we are at fifty. Uh, I think we're at fifty-one. We're fifty or fifty-one, depending on closing. So I think we're at fifty. Actually, I think we're at fifty-one today closed, mm-hmm. and we're at forty-eight pendings. Okay, so just to make sure I'm getting this right, it's about June 1st, and you're at 51 confirmed closings and 48 pending, correct? Yes, correct. Wow. That's a 200 transaction year. That's our our goal is to close 200 200 transactions. Good for you. And we have 125 125 listings. Oh, my God. Good for you. Now, let me ask you, obviously, okay, that is uh, a lot of work. So to maybe put it into some quantification for us, how, about how many of those do you suppose that you currently have got that are closed or, or maybe pending or, or something along those lines, how many of those were either flips or rehabs that you did or wholesales that you had a part of or, or some kind of investment property? About how many of those do you suppose of that 50 that were closed were, were investment related, do you suppose? Uh, we closed six, we closed six investment properties out of the 50, which is, which is way down from last year. Mm-hmm. And our market, um, our market in Tucson's changed a little bit. Correct. It's tightened up a lot on the flip. So I've been concentrating more on doing the brokerage into the business. Mm-hmm. I, the last, the previous three years were very good in the flips. Mm-hmm. And so I was heavily in the flips. As those got tighter and tighter, I went back to concentrating on my brokerage business. Mm-hmm. We closed 100 deals last year 
in brokerage. Mm -hmm. And about out of those hundred, about 20 of them were flips. Mm -hmm. Now we're concentrating on trying to close 200 with 10 of those being flips. Amazing. That's great production. Good for you. Okay. I'll tell you, I mean, whenever I think about those kind of numbers, I always think to myself that, you know, it certainly doesn't come easily. I imagine that you probably had to have some kind of challenges. I mean, we're talking about the mountain top of production here, 200 deals a year. You got a hundred something already going. I mean, what kind of challenges did you face the first couple, six months of the year or so, would you say? Oh, it's been, it's been a lot of challenges. We've been, we've been really, really focused. Not only did I buy into 200, my team bought into 200. I have seven people that work for me and we've all bought in on 200. So that is, that is the number that we all have in our mind. Mm -hmm. And we know we have to make X amount of contacts to get X amount of listings to get X amount of closings. Mm -hmm. So we're very tight on our numbers. We know exactly where we need to be. Um, we're a little bit off. We need a little bit more closings, but we've been pushing it really hard on our listings to hopefully make it up in this ha second half of the year. Okay, good deal. So you're feeling like you're kind of behind in your numbers, uh, and and the way I'm kind of hearing it, you've, as a team, decided to go ahead and commit to the number 200. Look, that's what we're going to do this year, and everybody's got their role. And as a team, you're a little bit behind in your contact numbers. That's what I heard. Is that correct? Uh, I'm a little bit behind in my closing numbers. Oh, the closing and, numbers. Okay. Yep. And that all, that all translates into, exactly, it translates into not enough contacts, not enough listings, not enough buyer closings. And now, so, right. So we have to we have to stay focused and push hard. And don't get me wrong, Carl. I did, I did. I, our number last year was 103 closings. Mm -hmm. So, if I fall short at 200, it's going to be probably somewhere between 175 and 200, Aww. which is, I know, which <laughs> is a lot better than it was last year. But we are still very driven toward that 200. You know, it's funny you should say that because Les Brown always said that we tend to make our goals a lot less than what we're really capable of. It's not that we make our goals too high. It's because we just don't make them big enough. And it seems like you're really living that out in a very big way. Let me ask you this, however. When you are looking at that, you, you, spat, you spat out a couple – words that some of the newer podcast folks may not necessarily be aware of. When you're saying that you've got a specific number of contacts, leads, you know, things of that nature, what exactly does that mean to you? And, and how does that kind of relate to mapping out a 200 deal a year business? Well, I have to, I have to call X amount, X amount of expired listings. I have to call X amount of past clients and center of influence. I have to contact X amount of four so by owners. Um, I have to talk to X amount of people a day. And not only do I have to make those contacts and I have to hit my numbers, my listing agent has to hit his numbers. My ISA internal sales agent, mm -hmm. she has to hit her numbers. So we all have to be talking to X amount of people a day. So my goal is that I have to talk to, I have to talk to 35 people a day. My listing agent, he needs to talk to 50 people a day. Mm -hmm. My ISA needs to talk to 30 people a day. If they hit those numbers, if they talk to those people, that many people a day, we will close 200. So, so it looks like you've got like 110 or more contacts per day that your team is making in an outbound sort of way between the three of you or more. Is that is that about right? Yes. Now, you... This is, okay, wait a minute. All right, you're doing 200 deals a year. We know that to, to get that 200 deals a year, we already mentioned that you're running some ads on a, on a, on a radio station. Uh, are, are, what kind of advertising are you doing to generate this kind of business? I mean, surely you can't be getting, you know, 98 transactions in six months by calling 110 people a day and running some dumb ads on a radio TV. I just, just, I can't, you can't be doing that. My, my, um, advertising budget 
my radio ads run about $1,400 a month, and I spend about $300 on Zillow, and that is my complete advertising budget. So you spend Anything, seven, do you spend $1,700 a month between becoming a Zillow premium agent or whatever that is and, and $1,400 on the radio, so $1,700 a month, and that's it as far as the advertising goes. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and honestly, Carl, the radio... The radio and the Zillow bring in very little compared to what our what our prospecting does. Our prospecting is ninety five percent of our business. Holy cow! Okay, so now let's take that step one one step back. I guess why? What? Okay, most of the people that I've talked with who are wholesalers or realtors or whatever. Many of the times when I've talked to them, especially when it comes down to investing as a realtor like you do and I do, many times they feel like they have to spend a, a bunch of money or they're told by gurus or whatever that they need to do massive amounts of mailing or Google AdWords, but yet here you are, uh, 98 transactions, calling, what, 110 a people per day between the three of you? Yes, and, and, then, and there's no rocket science to it, Carl. It's hard work. I mean, you, there's days you don't want to get on the phone and call, but you do. Because you know you have to, or you're not going to have any business the next day. Right. So, right. So you have to, you have to, call, you have to make the phone calls. And and Carl, I call people, I call for sale buyers all the time that are like, I don't want to list my home, I just want to sell it. And I'm like, well, I'll buy it, but you probably won't like my price. Mm-hmm. They're like, no, nope, we don't care, we just want to sell it. Okay, great, I'll go buy it. And yeah. it's just, I wouldn't. I wouldn't find that unless I was making phone calls every day. You know, and it's funny you should mention that because uh, one of the common things I hear, and and tell me what your opinion is. Now, and again, I'm trying to blindside you with some of these questions because, believe it or not, many of the questions that you and I just consider as routine are completely new concepts to some people. And one of those concepts is, for example, when it comes to competition. So let's assume... That you're going out there and you're prospecting and you find a, a seller who's motivated. They say they want to sell, they want to go to Tuscaloosa, Alabama or whatever. And let's just pretend that it was back in the day when I was doing a lot of prospecting myself and I found them too. And you and I were both going to go on the appointment together. What sort of thought process did you have about going then against me as a friend and now against others as competitors who are on your same company or whatever, how do you treat competitors who are in the same team or I'm sorry, in the same company or on who are your friends? I mean, do you back off? Do you push harder? Do you, what do you do? You definitely, you definitely don't back off because even if I knew you were going on a listing appointment or present an offer to buy a house or whatever, I couldn't back off on you because if I backed off on you and you backed off on me, then we would lose it to a third person. And if I was to lose it to you, Carl, then great. I lost it to a friend. Great. But if I lost it to another person, I would even feel worse. And the only re- the only way to prevent that is by trying my hardest every single time. And so, and it's not, it's just business. It's, it's not, there's nothing. I don't bad mouth anyone. I don't, I don't, degrade anybody mm-hmm. i did it's pure competition and so i i go aggressive as as if it's my best friend or if it's somebody i've never heard of you know that's a great point and it's a great outlook and i'll tell you the reason why i wanted to bring it up was because i've said that very same thing and many times it's as if people really don't believe it and it's actually very true that if you do lack and slack off i mean ultimately everybody is going to lose including that customer and good lord i mean you know that if if uh, at least i know that if if they just happen to pick you for some reason and not me well then they're still going to get good service it won't be as good as me of course but <laughs> i'm just teasing you. <laughs> anyway moving on the next question i had okay for you is simply this now another question that that some investors have, okay, when they start thinking about a realtor, how do they how do they get in touch with with a an investor friendly realtor, somebody who's like you, who's doing incredible amounts of business, yet 
is still willing to kind of, you know, go out and, and work on their own behalf and find investment properties and find investors, investor properties, how do they go out about talking and, and creating a relationship with an agent like someone like you in their town? Could you give them some well, insight I, on that? Yeah, I I made a note to myself years ago. I would never compete against a client. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if if a client if I'm out, the client says, "Hey, Kurt, I need a property central in an 80, for eighty thousand dollars, and I want to I want to buy for eighty. I want to put twenty into it, and I'm going to keep it as a rental, or I'm going to flip it for one forty. Then I'll go out and I'll hunt for that. I'll go out and hunt for that deal, and I won't buy it myself. I'll buy, I'll send it to my investor. The reason is I can't do. I don't. One, I don't have all the funds in the world, and I can't do all the deals that I find and generate. Mm -hmm. So if I can help an investor and make the money, then they're coming back to me over and over and over, and I keep getting commissions over and over and over, and we all make money. So how do they find, so that, how do they find a guy like you, though? Because many times when they call Zillow or they'll, they'll try and contact the agent or something like that, and they'll say, yeah, I'm, a, I'm looking to flip houses, and I'm a wholesaler and whatnot, and then they, all of a sudden they get the... You know, the click and that's it. That's it. I mean, do you have any kind of ideas on things they could actually say to an agent like you or an assistant? Or, I mean, is there something that some inside tips you think you could give them? Um, try to get a meeting with a try to get a meeting with a, a good agent. And if they're an age, if they're a large agent that has a team like myself, don't be don't don't be hesitant about working with one of their team members mm -hmm. because, like my buyer's agent, Steve. He finds deals for investors all the time. Mm -hmm. My Some of my investors don't want to work with me. They want to work with my buyer's agents because they know my buyer's agents are out looking at homes every day. Mm -hmm. So don't hesitate working with a team member of a large agent. Likewise, when I find a great deal, I'll call Steve up and say, hey, Steve, do you have anyone for this house? It's amazing. And Steve will say, yeah, my investor, my investor Carl's looking for one exactly like that. Mm -hmm. um, let me give him a call. So... It, it, there's no problem working with a team member instead of working with the agent. Try to get a meeting face to face with the team member or with the agent, and and do that way. I have a friend in Detroit, Michigan, who runs a very large team, and he has a full time investor agent. Mm -hmm. That the only that what that agent does on his team is only work with investors. Hmm. Okay. So. So that's the best situ situation. Well, that's some solid advice. I uh, I appreciate you giving the the uh, the heads up on that because it's true. I mean, the word uh, I'm sorry these these face to face meetings are really uh, what creates that 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 relationship that that element of trust. So when you're dealing with them as a realtor, dealing with an you know to an investor, I, I agree that that's for me a big thing. I need to have that element of trust that I know that this person as an investor is solid. So that's, that's good advice. You know, one, one final question I might have for you about that. You know, many times I know that investors, particularly wholesalers, those who are trying to do assignments or brand new agents, or I'm sorry, brand new wholesalers, something like that. It's a common belief that they, they say, uh, yeah, there's no deals on MLS. And so whenever they see something on MLS, they don't really go after it. They don't consider it a deal. Now, how long have you been investing and, and how long have you been in real estate again? It's just, I, I've just been a doing smidge this longer than me. Uh, 22 years. Yeah, I was going to say, it's just a smidge longer than me. So in, in, in that vein, what, what are your thoughts on that when an investor says that? What, what are your mind? What's your mind? Well... Yeah, I don't. I, I mean, I think that I think anyone, I think anyone um, that is new in the business can be super aggressive without bad habits. Anyone that's been in the business a long time has the knowledge to grow upon their knowledge. So um, find, like we had talked about earlier, find if you're an investor and you don't want to be an agent, find a great agent. I mean, you both I mean. I think me and you both agree that being an agent and an investor is the best of both worlds. Right. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you. I guess, so. yeah, I guess what I'm, I'm thinking is that, you know, it seems, it seems really funny to me that, for example, you have no, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, 
But if you're calling for sale by owners every day, talking to 35 people a day, and they're expireds, and they're for sale by owners, and old expireds, your center of influence, your past clients, all those people that you're calling, if one of them is a for sale by owner, and they say, you know what, we don't want to list our home, we just want to sell, you're willing to buy it. You don't say, nope, I'm sorry, you're a FISBO, I don't buy it. I don't buy FISBOs, unless you're listed. You don't say that, right? Oh no! I'd be out there. I'll be out there. I'll be out there that afternoon with an offer. <laughs> you know, and yet it's fine. It's funny to me because we have so many wholesalers, for example, or investors who are unlicensed, who will be approached by somebody who's on the MLS, who's in a 100% equity position, and saying, "I need to sell, get the hell out of Dodge, go to Tuscaloosa, Alabama," and they're saying, "Nope, sorry, I won't deal with it because it's on MLS." It boggles the mind if you ask me that's that's why i was oh, asking yeah no no carl there's great deals on mls every single day it's just a matter of finding the people that are motivated and don't get me wrong carl if they're super great deals and they come on mls really super low yes they'll get offers really quick but likewise carl me and you have done deals where something might be on mls for a year mm-hmm. and People call us up. They're sick of having it on the market, and they just want they just want out, and they're willing to just let it go for such a low price to get moved mm-hmm. that there's plenty of room for us to make money in it. Right. No, I I certainly agree. And this the client can get what they need. The customer can get moving to where they want to go, and then of course uh, everybody has a, a good transaction, and so everybody goes home smiling. So that's a good thing. Well, listen, you've been very patient with your time. Now I'm going to challenge you just one more thing. Let me ask you, if you were to give some advice to some of these newer realtors, these newer investors, these guys just you know, coming around you, clamoring for the wisdom of the ages, I mean, you've got 98 transactions done. It's June 1st. You're on the way to 200 deals per year. you got a big team. You started out small, you grew huge. You're from Washington State, right? Yeah, I was born and raised on a farm in Washington. Good gracious. I mean, it's not like you were, you know, from the big city or anything. So here you are, a little city guy, done good. What three pieces of advice would you give to those folks? But please try and keep it under 100 bucks because they don't have a bunch of bucks. What kind of advice would you give them to, to make the most powerful changes they could to get the results, uh, the best results they could? Um, number one, if you can't afford coaching, start listening to a coach. I've I've been around I've been around been around coaching a coaching program for for eighteen of the twenty two years I've been in business, and it changed my whole life. So being around a coach, being around a coaching, if you can't afford coaching, um, work, make that a goal. Make that a goal is I'm going to work hard so I can afford a coach. Once you get a coach, it will take you to the next level. My coach already is talking about 300 deals next year. And I'm like, I just want to finish 200. <laughs> so, so my coach is pushing me and I would never grow if it wasn't for my coach. So that's number one. Um, Number two, work work on the days that you don't want to work. Ooh, okay, I like that. So there's many days. There's many days I get up that I don't feel like working, but I'm on the phone at eight a.m. and there's no stopping it. I have to be on the phone at eight a.m. At okay, eight so a.m. But wait a minute don't don't people don't people get angry when you call them that early? No, they're no. They, you have to catch them before they go to work, and if they're angry, then you don't want you don't want to talk to them anyway. <laughs> Amen. So, no. I like that. Get if yeah. uh, if you're if it if it's past eight, you're late, right? Oh, you have to be on at eight a.m. There's people that call at seven thirty. So I call at eight. I do respect some people that uh, yes, and don't get me wrong, yeah. seven thirty is fine too. But I, I call. I start calling at eight. Right. That's and what I did. And if too. I don't, I. Yeah, and I do it on I do it on the days that I don't even feel like doing it, but I have to get my contacts in. Mm. So work on the days you don't feel like working. This is not you're not an independent contractor. You are working for your goals. Mm. Mm. So yeah, so make make that a commitment, and then surround yourself by people who do more business than you. Wow. All right, so good one. I like that one. 
Right. Don't hang around people who aren't motivated, who aren't doing as much as you are. If you're the big cheese in the room, then you're broke. Because if you're the big cheese in the room and you're proud of yourself, then you're not growing. So I'm constantly talking to people who do a lot more business than I do. And that's what motivates me because I want to be like them. I don't want to be where I am right now. Wow, that is some amazing advice. Boy, I got to tell you, Kurt, I mean, that's even exceeding what I thought it would be. Good God. So, oh, man. So let me tell you, you, you know, guys, if you're really uh, – Kurt Stinson is is one of my oldest friends in the in the real estate game. If you've got some real estate business that you'd like to send in return for Kurt's time and maybe something he taught you, then please, by all means, go ahead and grab a pen, grab a piece of paper. Kurt, what's a good number, a good email, whatever that they could send referrals to you here in the Tucson, Arizona area? Oh, no problem. It's Kurt Stinson. I'm with Realty Executives. Mm -hmm. The best number to reach me at is my cell phone is 520-954-5800. Phone call or text is great. Um, If you want to email, it's Kurt, C-U-R-T, at homesbykurt.com. Awesome. Good deal. Well, Kurt, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to go ahead and share with us all the good stuff that you've been doing. And and I'll tell you, if it's okay with you, I'd like to reserve an appointment in advance uh, in the end of the year time frame just to kind of see how you did. Oh, Carl, any any time. Any time, Carl. I appreciate these calls. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, listen, thank you so much. Guys, thank you for sticking in with us and sharing all this uh, great information. If you happen to know of somebody who'd like to sit in with us during Investor Week, then by all means, feel free to share this podcast with them. And as always, you guys have a powerful sales day. Bye-bye. 